to Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Today's message is called Atmosphere Changers. When God saved us, when God filled us with the Holy Spirit, he never saved our souls. He never covered us under the blood of Jesus. He never assigned angels to watch over us. He never empowered us with the Holy Spirit so that we can be conformed to the world. In fact, he gave us the opposite. He said, do not be conformed to the world. But he sent us out into the world to preach the good news. He sent us out into the world to change the atmosphere. If you have the Holy spirit inside of you, you are called to make a difference. You're not called to uh, hibernate and be to yourself and to not share what God has done. God is sending us forward because the world needs help. Does anyone disagree with that? The world needs help. Is there any confusion there? That we, we see all kinds of trouble. Like Sister Nancy said that the uh, you go on Facebook and uh, now it's a trend uh, to just run up to people and punch them in the face to see if you can knock them out. There's all kinds of negative and evil, corrupt things. And it's only getting worse and worse. How many know the devil is constantly trying to push the bar? He's constantly trying to push boundaries and to see how far he can go. How many of you know he don't have no boundaries? The only boundaries that the devil has is the ones that God puts on him. And you have to know that God has the power to put boundaries in the devil. How many of you know that God is calling us to put boundaries in our own life? To not allow the devil into our life. To set boundaries. I'm sorry, devil, you could keep on knocking, but you, you can't come in. You can knock all you want. That's your right. But I'm not going to open up the door and allow you to come into my life. I'm going to keep that door shut. In fact, as you're knocking, devil, I might dance to the knock. But you ain't coming. <laughs> How many of you know the devil's not going to give up? He's, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God wants us to be atmosphere changers. How many of you know when a hurricane goes forward, a hurricane... It changes the whole entire atmosphere. It changes it. it. It tears things up. It destroys things. It ruins things. But how many of you know, just as the devil is constantly changing atmospheres, so is the people of God. If you look at Jesus Christ, wherever he went, he changed the atmosphere. He had the power and the gift and the calling of God to be able to change the atmosphere. But Jesus said this. He said, you will do greater things than me. So he empowered us to be able to change atmospheres as well. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 14. Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. This situation right here with Hezekiah, he got a letter that was threatening him to his whole entire life, his family, his friends, his kingdom. He got one single letter that rocked his world. He didn't spread before the Lord because everything was going good. He got one single notification that caused him 
to react a certain way. How many know you could be doing good in life? You can be living a certain way, happy, full of joy. Everything is working out great. You got a, you got a nice income source. You got nice family members. You got a good relationship going on. And how many know with one single phone call or one single letter, everything can change at the drop of a dime? That's all it takes. I've experienced it myself. Two weeks ago, one single letter can, you, how many know in this life, you're subject to lose everything. Everything is subject to be taken away. No matter how great you are in God, there's always going to be people who have authority over your job, over your income. over Even if you're an owner, there, still, there's always people in government that have some form of authority over you. And that one phone call, that one letter can completely change everything. It can, can change your whole mentality. <laughs> it can ruin your whole week. And look at what Hezekiah did when he received that negative letter. He immediately spread before the Lord. See, I'm believing this, that in life it's not about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. Things are going to happen to you. Good things are going to happen to you. Bad things are going to happen to you. How are you responding to what happens to you? Hezekiah did the right thing. He spread before the Lord and he cried out before God. How many of you know God has the power to change the atmosphere? God has the power to change the situation no matter how bad it gets. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 15. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms. See, Hezekiah, when he was praying, he wasn't praying in doubt. He wasn't praying in not trusting that God had all control. He was acknowledging in his prayer, God, you are the most powerful God. God, I know this situation is not good. I know the enemies are encamped all around me and they are ready to wipe us out. But Father God, I recognize their power. I understand how bad the situation is. I know, Father God, that if you do not intervene in my behalf, I will be destroyed. But Father God, I also recognize that you, Father God, are the highest level of power. You, Father God, are the one that have angels working for you. You are the one who are calling the shots. You are the one who's setting the order. Father God, you can send an angel and to just take away all my problems just like that. In 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 16 and 17, 18 and 19. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. It is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste to the nations and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them. For they were not gods, but only wood and stone, fashioned by human hands. Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hands, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. See, when you're serving God, when you make a stand for being a Christian, when you're walking with the true and living God, there are going to be people that come against you, but not personal, but they see in the spiritual realm that you carry the light. You carry the Holy Spirit and demons don't like you carrying the light. Demons don't like the light. They hate the light and they're going to try to discourage the light. They're going to try to put out the light. They are going to attack the light. So when you get into certain battles, don't think it's strange. Don't think it bizarre that the fiery trial that is going to try you when you serve God is happening to you. Recognize there's a reason why these things are happening. How many of you know God purposely will set up enemies against the people of God so God can wipe them out and God can get all the glory? Do you know that these things will happen in your life? It's not bizarre. It's going to happen. The Bible said in this situation that this, 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 king of Assyria, he has a record. He has a reputation of destroying other lands. He has a reputation of wiping out other people. 
but he still recognized that the God, even though he was so powerful at that time, he served the false God. The king of Assyria, as strong as his man-made power was, as strong as his man-made riches, as strong as his worldly resources were, he knew that it was not stronger than our Lord. He knew that it was not stronger than our Lord. Can I tell you, no matter what comes against you, no matter how big and powerful it is, it's not stronger than our God. It may be in the world's eyes, but not in God's eyes. It says, Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hand so that all the kingdoms on earth may know that you alone are. Lord our God. Can I tell you, when you know that you're in the will of God, when you know that you're repenting, I'm not saying that you're perfect in all your ways, but you're sincerely loving God. You're sincerely serving God. You sincerely have the Holy Spirit. You're sincerely doing what God wants you to do. You're where God wants you to be. Can I tell you, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about anything. Because God said, cast your cares upon me. Cast your cares upon God. Rest in Him. Rest in Him. Can I tell you, in prison, there's something that happens that changes the atmosphere. In prison, when there's getting ready to be a riot, in prison, when they're getting ready to be a fight, or when there's gang violence, when there's things that are getting ready to take place, what happens is it gets very silent. It gets very silent. And, and, and even if you've never been to prison before, even if you've never um, uh, uh, experienced anything like that for yourself, you could feel the tension in the atmosphere without anyone ever even saying a word. You could feel it. You walk into a room and there's just utter silence. And you, if, if you know something's getting ready to happen. Because the normal atmosphere in prison is chaos. The normal atmosphere in prison is people yelling and arguing and, and being loud and obnoxious. That's the normal atmosphere. And when it gets silent, that means something's getting ready to happen. And can I tell you, when we were incarcerated the, in prison, the Christian people rose up and we prayed. We knew something was going to happen and we got together and we formed circles and we prayed against what was getting ready to happen. And can I tell you that I've experienced the power of prayer. Not the power of muscle, not even the power of man. But the power of prayer, going before God, acknowledging an atmosphere is totally ugly, an atmosphere is totally negative, an atmosphere of murder in the air, and going with the anointing of God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, going in the midst of the atmosphere and praying before your God and believing that He is greater than anything that the world can throw. And experiencing God completely change the atmosphere. Can I tell you the reason why you see trouble taking place is never so you can ignore it. It's never so you can ignore it. Not if you're a child of God. What about King David when he walked up to Goliath and he saw the enemy mocking God, the enemy taunting God? What if King David would have saw Goliath and would have turned his back like everybody else? Would have been fearful, would have been a coward, would have been timid. What would have happened? Then God's people wouldn't have had the victory. But God is looking for atmosphere changers. 
Not someone that's looking to blend in with everybody else, but someone that's going to go against the grain, go against the waves, and make a difference. Can I tell you, God doesn't need thousands of people to change the atmosphere. He only needs one anointed man or woman of God to go into a chaotic atmosphere and completely change it. Now, why am I saying this? Because I was taught in theology school? No, I'm saying this because I've experienced it from my own two eyes. I've seen people of God change an atmosphere. I've watched a few people in prison pray about the atmosphere, about what was getting ready to happen, and stop riots. Stop riots. If you live in an apartment complex, or you live in a house, and you hear a fighting, or you hear screaming, what are you going to do as a man and woman of God? Are you going to constantly turn your back? Are you going to pray for them and not do anything? Are you going to pray and after you pray, just go about your day like everything else? Because that's not going to change the atmosphere. Can I tell you, it could be someone getting abused, someone getting hurt, and, and it's happening over and over and year, over because nobody does anything. They might pray about it, but the Bible says faith without works is dead. God is raising up people of God to do something to be a difference, to change an atmosphere. Can I tell you, if you're ever going to do any type of ministry at all, you have to be an atmosphere changer. Glory to Jesus Christ every time someone does prison ministry. There's already a negative atmosphere. It's already a negative atmosphere. Now, when you go to do the ministry, you can't become like the rest of the atmosphere. That's not going to help them. People who are already soaking wet, if you become soaking wet, you can't help them. But if you have a towel, you can dry them off. God is looking for people who are on fire for God. Not lukewarm or cold, but on fire. It only takes one tiny spark to cause an atmosphere-changing forest fire. It always starts with one little spark. And the devil's telling you that your one little spark inside of you is not good enough. The devil's constantly telling you that your little spark inside of you is not enough to change the atmosphere. But can I tell you, the devil's a lie. I'm sure the devil was right there with Hezekiah saying, boy, look at you, foolish king. You're getting ready to be annihilated. Enemies surrounded all around you. And here you are trying to pray before the Lord. He ain't hearing you. He ain't listening to you. He is listening to you. Keep praying before the Lord. He's going to hear your prayer and he's going to act on it and you're going to be the one that causes the spark that changes the atmosphere. This is what God is looking for. Now we're looking for help to come in politics. We're looking for help to come with leaders. God said, that's nice. How about I want to use you? How about I want to use you right where you're at in your neighborhood? We always look for help through people through systems. And God said, I'm looking for help. I want you to be my hands and feet. I want you to be a priest of a holy nation. I want you to be the man of woman of God that I'm going to send forward to make a difference. I want you. Yeah, I know you've sinned. I know you've done things that are despicable. I know you should be in hell. But my grace is sufficient. I've forgiven you. I love you. I'm sending you forward and I'm going to use you. If you're ever going to do any form of ministry, you can't wait for the, me and, me and Pastor Greg, we talk about this, Bishop Greg, we talk about this all the time. You can't wait for the church to start praising and shouting and saying amen. You have to go there with your anointing with God, and you have to be the one to get the church to start shouting and jumping and praising God, because it ain't going to happen. People need a little bit of encouragement. People need a little bit of a bump. People need a little bit of push. And can I tell you, that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will rise up inside of us like fire shut up in our bones. We need a little motivation. How many know God wants to use you to be the motivator? How God wants to be, use you to be the one to inspire. When I go to the prison, glory to God, I don't wait for the, in, the, the inmates to start praising God. 
I go in there praising God. I go in there praying. I go in there with joy. I don't wait for them to get uh, happy and excited. They come in with all those spirits. We have to be the one to set the tone. Through God, not on our own. Please don't mistake me. Never on our own. We, outside of Christ, we could do nothing. Inside of Christ, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So here Hezekiah, he goes, bef he is the biggest underdog, even a laughing stock. But can I tell you, you may be a laughing stock. You may be the underdog. You may be fit in every way possible. You may be counted out in every possible category. But how many of you know that's the more glory God's going to get when the atmosphere changes through you? We say, oh, if I was only articulate, if I was only tall, dark, and handsome, if I was only this, if I only had this, if I only had this amount of money, if I only had this connection, God said, all that stuff is not going to glorify me. I just need a willing heart, a man or woman of God with faith in Jesus Christ, and I'll take it from there. I'll take it from there, God said. In 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 35, the Bible says, That night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death a hundred and eighty-five thousand in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. All the dead bodies. Can I tell you, hundred and eighty-five thousand dead bodies or excuse me 185,000 dead problems each body represented a problem do you feel like you have 185,000 problems in your life right now can I tell you no matter how many problems you got if you call upon the Lord if you lay your face on God and you pray and ask God to help you you'll wake up the next morning with 185 thousand dead problems because God can give you the victory. It don't matter how many things are going against you. It's supposed to happen. It's supposed to happen. It's the normal for the people of God. How do I know that? Because Jesus said all those who live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Not to Folgers. But wake up to 185,000 dead problems. When you thought you were going to be annihilated, when you thought you were going to be wiped out, wake up. Go to sleep. Be at peace. Trust in God. And wake up to 185,000 dead problems. You know, I remember uh, working at the gym, and I remember... I remember the whole atmosphere of the gym being so peaceful and so full of uh, joy and we're having friendly conversation and I kid you not, there was one lady that walked into the gym and she changed the whole entire atmosphere and I could almost see it in the natural. After this lady walked in, you could feel like a demonic power that she carried. You could feel the spirits on her. You could feel the negativity. Have you ever experienced that before where you've seen someone just, they carried a darkness about them? You, 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 you didn't have, as soon as they came into your atmosphere, you didn't feel no peace. See, that is the devil's atmosphere changers. The devil has atmosphere changers. The devil's looking for a place. I've been to church services where everyone's praising God in the middle of the service, and the devil will barge in in the middle of the service, and you can feel the negativity. You can feel the spirits that they carry. Are you going to allow the devil to be the one to change the atmosphere all the time? Are you going to sit back whining and complaining and crying how the atmosphere is so negative? Or are you going to call upon on God and ask him to anoint you for you to be the one to change the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. God gave us power. He said to this, he said this, he said in our mouth comes blessings or cursings. Out of the abundance of our mouth the heart speaks. Do you have blessings in your heart? 
the mouth calls life or death are in the power of the tongue. Do you have life in your heart or do you have death in your heart? Let there be life and blessings in your heart and speak it everywhere you go. Speak it everywhere you go. Don't look for help in all the wrong places. You be the help. God said, I want to prepare you. Look at the, two, the little boy with the two fish and five loaves. He could have simply said, oh, this atmosphere of all these angry, hungry people. They followed Jesus for so long, and they're not happy. The little boy could have said, oh, you know, my little two fish and five loaves is not good enough. And it wasn't good enough. But it doesn't matter what you have lacking, because God will always make up the difference if you trust in him and you give it over to him. He'll take what you got. And use it to do a miracle. It's like Samson. When Samson was going forward to fight the enemies of God, he didn't have a machine gun. He didn't have a rocket launcher. He didn't have a Uzi. He didn't have a, a Scud missile. He saw what the only thing that he had was a jawbone of a donkey. And he took with what he had and he used it for the glory of God. All of us have something. You might feel like it has no value, but it has a value to God. All of us have something that we can use. Pick up your jawbone of the donkey and change the atmosphere. Get victory in the name of God. Well, I would give victory, but I just got a jawbone. I only have a jawbone of a donkey. That's okay. That's okay. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 3, 4, and 5. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinon the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. All right, and if you don't understand a word that Sister Melinda said, that's okay. I'm going to summarize it. Basically, David was having a hard day. The village was raped and pillaged and set on fire. It was burnt down. His wives were kidnapped and taken. He lost everything that he had. He came back, and there was nothing there but ashes and soot. He was distressed. Have you ever came back home, and your home wasn't there? Your home was completely gone, set on fire. See, the, the things that we think we're having a bad day, believe me, it can always get so much worse. We think we're having a bad day. We haven't even experienced a lot of hardship. We become so pampered and so spoiled that anything, we break a nail. Oh, Lord, I don't know if I can move on anymore. <laughs> I've broken a nail. And God say, just come on. It's not that bad. You, we always think that when we get into ourself, we think that our situation is so horrible. And that's only because we're stuck by ourselves, and we haven't even engaged in normal conversations with other people. And in casual conversation, we can hear the catastrophes that other people are going through. And in spite of this situation that David was going through, let's look at what he did. How did he respond to uh, burnt with fire their wives and their sons and their daughters? Look at that. Not just your wives and your husbands, but for him, not just the wives were taken, but his sons and daughters were taken. Imagine how you would feel if your sons and daughters were taken from you. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 6, it says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So, so look at this. On top of David having everything destroyed and burnt down, on top of his wives being taken from him, on top of his sons and daughters being taken from him, his own people were turning against him. His own people were talking about stoning him and destroying him. That's a bad day. And then in spite of that, the Bible says, but, 
Look at that. I know you're going through a bad ship and you're having hard times at work, but I know you're having a hard relationship, you're having family problems, but I know you're struggling financially and you're going through hardship, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. What are you doing? Are you Christian church? The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church